Hello. I wasn't going to come live tonight because I have got my grandson here. So please forgive me if I have to keep muting to go and sort my grandson out. Even though he has promised to be quiet and to watch his programme in my room on my TV. So we'll see how that goes. Anyway. As I said, I wasn't going to come live unless we had some new updates. Well, it was a last minute thing about coming live because I was sitting here and I was seeing all these information come through on the Facebook pages and everything. <coughs> <coughs> about the searches going on. And then I heard about uh, how Seth's father was on you know what was in i'll go on i'll tell you it was um no no city no vesity no vesity he came on his show last night and he was talking on there so i thought we'd just, we'd listen to that and um also go through little things that i've been hearing to you little things little things that caught my attention on hmm really so how's everyone doing today I'm a lot better than I was last night. I'm not coughing and spluttering as much. I'm not like starting the inching up and spluttering away. Hold on, hold on a minute, please. Oh God, they'll be back in a minute. He's only going to get my drink that I gave him because he wanted a drink. So I said, take this one. And he's just coming saying, I don't like that drink. Hold on. Sorry about that. Anyway. Oh my god. Ellis, please go to go to my room now, please, and watch your program. Come on. I don't know what he's up to. Go, no, go. go. You're not rubbing me of any more money. Right? Anyway. Oh my lord, this lad is on the go 24-7. He wanted to come last night and I said no because I was not at all well. But I said he could come tonight. Just for the one night. Oh my god. Anyway, <laughs> we are going to look at some of uh, the information that's been coming out. And this is a Facebook page. All right, when it comes up, right. This is the Facebook page that I can get reliable information off.
Ron. And the first one I did see was this one. Because I come up on my Facebook page. So. And Right, it's only 40 seconds long. And someone's put up a post saying, um, I think someone posted last night that there was a foul smell coming from that area. So, I don't know. But, I have heard, and I did mention the other night that apparently, um, a friend of his from school did say to his mother when he found out that he'd gone missing because he, he'd moved schools. His friend had moved schools. So when he found out that Sebastian had gone missing, he said to his mother that Sebastian always used to joke about or say that one day he's going to go out this door and it was a door that led from the classroom to outside. And when you went out these doors, you could just literally walk across the playground and there's this forest filled, uh, a wooded a wooded area. And he said, you just, you've got to do that one day because just to get away from the teachers. Right? And it just so happens that all the searches seem to be around by the school. Hold on, hold on. Shut up, please. Be quiet. No. I don't hear the ball Yes, I can hear. I can hear your every word. Now, please, folks. I'm sorry about this. I wish I, I knew this was not a good idea to do this tonight with him here. I knew it. I knew he couldn't keep his promise. But this is my grandson who I talk about a lot. I talk about him a lot on here. And he's very loud. And he's constantly on the bed. If you can hear him on the background. Hold on. Right. Oh. See, he's hard. My grandson is six years old and he doesn't understand what it means to make a promise. He says, yes, I promise, but he doesn't understand. Right. So. We are looking at that, that wasn't me. And then you can see here. Again, what this one is. Let's have a look, shall we? This is only 58 seconds.
Đấy. Nhà. Anh về mà. Tìm nhỉ. Nhà. I was watching that one, the last one I just showed you where the the camera is zooming in. Nhà. That first week they had all those searches going on. Did they not? Was the news team not able to catch all that going on then? Because they wasn't getting nothing like that the first week. Not that I remember. And I've been on this case since the first week. I mean, he went missing on the Monday. And I did, I found out about it on the Tuesday. And I did my first live on the Wednesday. There wasn't very many YouTubers doing lives at the top at that time. Trev time was, and maybe one or two others, but that was it. And um, but we wasn't seeing no uh, reports from the news news people where they're filming them doing the searches like that. So did they not search there in the first place, or are they just going over? The ground again, the area again, in case something was missed. Because it could be, I just think it's a bit funny how they did that news, uh, that press release yesterday with no new updates. Right? And then today they're all out there. Why didn't I say yesterday that this, this was going to be happening? That press release. They knew it was going to get out, so people was going to see it and start filming them and put it on Facebook or something, right? So they knew it would get out, so why didn't they just say, starting tomorrow, tomorrow we will be doing a renewed search of the area around his school, the school he went to and his home. Why can't they just tell us things like that? So, oh well. <sighs> All right, so, um, where are we? Yes, uh, as well, um, Beth is doing, well, he's done, he done the interview this morning, or this morning, he's doing the interview, whatever time it is over there, and, um, but they don't, they normally put the podcast out first. And that's normally around about nine o'clock. Then about eleven PM they put the YouTube out, YouTube video. Eleven twelve PM my time they put the YouTube video out. And it'll be interesting to see this one again. After the last interview she did with the mother and the stepfather, it'll be interesting to see what she has to say at this time. And what annoyed me was in that press release yesterday, right, they mentioned how they found a pair of glasses. They found a pair of glasses. No, they didn't. Law enforcement. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Right, and um, find out that it is a group of searches that was with Seth 
Seth wasn't actually with us. He was somewhere else. He'd sent him to this one area just to hang leaflets out, like the missing posters thing. And that's when they came across these glasses. So they got into to Seth. Seth came up. And um, he couldn't be certain because he said it'd been a, a while since he last seen his son. But don't forget, his son's been missing five weeks. Coming up to six weeks. And um, it's now... And he hadn't seen him for, what, two weeks before that. So he hasn't seen him for, like, two months. So he probably... And he's had other things on his mind as well. So he couldn't be sure that was his... But it was that it was that sure that they that they could be. It was ninety percent sure that they could be. That he got them to bag them, bag them up, and tag them, and hand them into TBR. Right. So when they did that press release last night, and they mentioned how they found some glasses. No, they didn't. Once again, it was the public, the volunteers, not the police, not the law enforcement, not the sheriffs, not whoever, not TBI, FBI, you name it. It was none of them. And they was found, uh, the, inter the press release was yesterday, which was what, Tuesday? So they was found Monday. And they said they was found a few days ago. There wasn't. They was found the day before the press release. But apparently it has come back where they are staying. Oh, I'm trying to hear somewhere. They're saying the glasses have got nothing on the phone. Oh. oh, God, you know. Oh, God, you know, this is so long trying to find the information. Because this page is updated literally within seconds. There's people posting everything. Right? But anyway, it was posted. Whoa. Right. Oh, hold on a minute, please. Hold on. Sorry about that. Anyway, so, so but there's a lot come out. And I'm going to show you um right. Let oh no, Bobby. It's not Ellis, it's the cats. Thank you, God. Right. I'm going to show you Google Maps because it's interesting where these glasses were found. Right? Um, where is it? Right. 
I'm not on about that bit now. I'm on about uh, delete that. And I was found. There was a found there. Two tables caught. Hold on. Right. Now, as you can see, this is where Sebastian lives, and this is where I will take it. Oh, that's far, is he? No. I'll soon find out that's the right place. And come in. Yes, that's the right place. That's where those planes ran down. Right? However, just around here, just about here, right, is where, this is why it's so interesting where these glasses were found. And even though the TBR have now said they've got no connection to Sebastian, they probably haven't. Uh -huh. But it's just so interesting to know that. Just here, right about here. Right, right about there. Is where. Chris Proudfoot's mother and stepfather lived. Now there's been a lot of talk. About his parents having something to do with this disappearance of Sebastian. Yeah, so I don't know who it was, but someone must have it wrong because they said, Oh, well, it's only like 15 minutes away. It isn't, it's actually five hours away. Five hours away from where they live. If you see where I'm pulling out, it doesn't look far on the map, but it's actually showing up. Oh, that's walking. Right, car, 30 minutes, and you go that way. That's it, that's more likely. 30 minutes, and you go this way. Right? So they don't live that far away from each other. 30 minutes, because that's about the same distance. I don't know. It takes me about an hour to walk to my son's, so I don't know. It's quite a distance I walk to my son's, but it's a nice walk. And I only do it in the summer when it's really, really hot. Anyway, but it's just a bit. If you see what I mean, it's just a bit hmm, coincidental that these glasses that Seth believed was at least 90% sure they could be. Not, he wasn't 90% sure they wasn't Sebastian, but he was 90% sure they could be Sebastian. And it's just coincidental that his Chris Proudfoot's parents lived up that way, just there. You know, could they have something to do with it and just go up that road, maybe, and burn them out? Don't know. It could belong to someone who lives in that road. Perhaps they've dropped them. It's fell out the bags. You know what I mean? 
I don't know how many times I've pulled something out of my bag, my bag and my glasses have fell out. So, it's just a bit too coincidental for my liking. And then, if someone else pulled something up today, this one, yeah, look at this, I'm going to share it with you, because I think you should be saying, where is it, uh, that's it. Now, do you remember oh, a few weeks back, it was mentioned about the children's, uh, the sex offenders registry, and now there was one who lived so far away, and then they found another one who lived pretty close to them. Well, this one is the one where they leave, hold on, I'm going to punch his address, please. Oh god, yeah, yeah. Um Yeah, what was the address again? Oh, it's up on the uh it's up on here, isn't it? Now this is the one that gave us over the two five six hertz road. I'm better than the maps like this. For some reason, I can find things better when I've got a map like this. Now, they live there, and this is where that sex offender, SO, lives. Or registered as living. Right? Four minutes away in a car. Four minutes. That is too damn close to be comfortable. You know what I mean? 40 hours, maybe that would be a bit more comfortable. But look, all the, you've got all these houses around here. People live around here. And there's all these houses over here. Now, they went for something to eat the other night. Where did I go? I know they went down this road, I'm sure of them. Somewhere around here where they went to get something to eat on the Sunday. Right. And so you think there, there was having something to eat around here somewhere. Because I know on the map it showed him coming along this road, along here, and then home. Right. So I know it's along here, around here somewhere. Around here, but you think there, say there, right? And he's there. What's saying he wasn't at that place, wherever it was they went to eat? Can't remember now. And he clocked on to, right? 
I don't know. It's a bit as a bit I'm just wrong out there. Perhaps you could have followed them home. But to be honest with you, there's no sightings of Sebastian. Right? No sightings of Sebastian. Once he leaves that restaurant. See, so that's where the SO leaves here. That's where Sebastian will go up there. That's where uh, Sebastian moves. Four minutes away. Right? Had you been in touch with Sebastian beforehand? Because look, there's the school there. That's the school. It's only four minutes to Sebastian's house, so to the school it's only going to be, it'd be about the same. be about the same. Four minutes if he went straight away to the school. So how do we know he hasn't spoken to Sebastian beforehand? How do we know he's going to, know, and Sebastian has confided in him? Like they groom them, don't they? They groom these children. How do we know Sebastian hasn't confided in him? And how do we know they didn't arrange for Sebastian to leave the house and meet up? But saying that, you might as well throw that right out the window because there was no scent for the dogs of Sebastian outside of that house. No scent. Someone did say perhaps the mother gave him an item of clothing he's not yet wore. Right? But she said he also took like a uh, this comforter thing, a blanket thing or whatever he likes. Yeah? So I don't know. There's all these, there's no way could that lad leave that house with no scent. Right? What happened about Saturday? You're telling me that on Saturday when he's out and about the house taking the rubbish out, whatever, was he not outside that house at all on Saturday? Did he stay in all the time? Did he not go outside at all? Because I know some say dogs can track a scent, pick a scent up, which could be days old. Right? Days old. So, could they not have picked his scent up from a week earlier? When apparently it's his job to take the rubbish out on a Sunday night. So, could they not pick up on his scent from a week earlier? I don't know. So, um... It's just a bit weird, but I am still stuck at this house. I'm sorry. I'm stuck here. Yeah. I have mentally, I keep pulling myself away from it. From that house but I keep getting drawn back to the house
Đấy. Keep getting to run back to that. Now that is where the dining room is. The dining table is there. You've seen it in many videos and interviews they've done. Now Sebastian's bedroom is at the front of the house. So that must be his bedroom window. His mother's bedroom over here somewhere it's at because see that window there there's stairs that go up to there and that takes you into the loft and he's the stepfather said that is the room which is doing which is keeping for his daughter face yes said so it's in the loft over the garage So the mother's bedroom is at the back here. Right? Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. What is that? Is that a bomb? Just some of us said about a dog sent to being picked up by the bar. Anyway. Oh, come on. Right. right, so this is where Sebastian's bedroom was here. here. Right. Five's bedroom was up in the loft above the garage. And the mother's bedroom and stepfather's bedroom was at the back here. And then you've got like the dining room, kitchen, kitchen area, sort of thing, dining room kitchen area, living room, and kitchen area comes into the living room area a bit, right, because it's all open plan. I don't know what's here, I'm not sure, I can't remember in the pictures. Uh, who's that the barn no song about? But I know the mother's bedroom is over here. Is over here. Now, I'm sorry, but that I would not have a child on the front of the house here when I'm over this side. Not happening. No, if my bedroom was here, I'd have the child here in that loft room. Yeah, so you work on the same side. This room, I'll keep as a spare room, right? 
Oh, not please. You know what I mean? But I couldn't have, I can, I wouldn't be able to sleep, sleep at you night. Know, there, you know, my, a child of mine was over the other side of the house. I walked in. And I know this is the living room here, round here. Because the living room leads onto the sun room. Which leads onto the garden. I know that's the dining room here, this section here. And the dining room leads into the kitchen. But the kitchen also leads into the lounge. Right? And it's got another little room here, which leads into the sunroom. So they've got two ways into the sunroom. One through some double doors here from the living room or from this room here right there we've got a little single door into there but to get to sebastian's room this is her room over here right on the ground floor she's got to come through the kitchen and either through the land a uh, dining room or through the lounge to come round into Sebastian's room. So having her could she say after she went to wake Sebastian up, she went back to the kitchen to see if he was in the kitchen doing breakfast when she had already walked through or past the kitchen to get to Sebastian's room. And and the other thing. If they're in bed, or she's in bed here, how is she gonna hear him climb out of the window? She's not. She'd hear him go out this way, because I know those doors can be a bit creaky. Right? From the sunroom. So she could she could hear him go out that way, but she's not going to hear him go out the out his bedroom window. I doubt if she even hear him go out the front door. Because the front door is like here. You've got an entrance by a hallway, and off there you've got like the dining room that leads into the kitchen. But off there, the entrance bay, you can go straight into the lounge, which also leads into the kitchen. And off the kitchen, there's another room here, right? Which leads, with a door, which leads into the sun room. Off the kitchen, you've got like some stairs there, because on the pictures, it shows the stair gates going upstairs to the loft and then the main bedroom is here so really i don't think she's hearing going out the front door let alone going out of his window there's no way she's hearing <coughs> <coughs> And everyone goes on about the the food, right? Now, there may have been a food, and it could be her way of saying, well, if they do find his body, then they find damage to his head. That can explain the the thug noise. But it doesn't explain how the body got from the bedroom to wherever. Do you know what I mean? Anyway, so but I said someone was going on about this thug. And I went, 
please bear in mind the first interview she said she gave. She said they went to bed, no problems. He said good night, love you to the puppies, love you mum, and went to bed. Then because people say, did you not check on him when you went to bed? Well, she then went, come out and I did to her story and said, well, at 10 o'clock, I heard a thud. Okay. So why didn't you check on your son? If you heard a thud, why didn't you go through? So what did she do then? Next interview. Well, I heard your thought, and I'll shout it through to him. Shush, please. I'll shout it through. Sebastian, did you fall out? Poor bad, did you fall out of bed? And he's going, no, he's, he replied, no, ma'am. So she's making out she had this little conversation. Hold on. I've now got a thought. My cat's out. The flipping mad astronaut. The yeah. owl. In my house, right? And um, so three interviews. First interview, he went to bed, no problem, didn't hear off him all night. Second interview, after people commented, said something, she turned around and said, She heard a thud. Why well, didn't you go and check on him? No, because he's 50 years of old age, and I don't like to keep. He's got his own privacy. That sort of thing she said. 15 years away, I'm respecting his privacy. Sort of thing. And then people go, I'm sorry, if I heard your thought coming from my child's room, I'd be in there. Privacy or not, I'd want to know what's happening. So then the third interview, she comes out. Well, I'm lying there, sitting there, and I heard your thought. So I shouted to her, Sebastian, uh, Bubba, was that you falling out of bed? And he replied, no, ma'am. So I pack it in, get to sleep. So she made out she had a conversation with him. Well, I don't believe a word of that because she's watching the YouTube channels. She's watching these YouTube channels. And she's watching and listening to everything we say. And if we pick up on a discrepancy, she comes back and adds to her story. Right? To make, make it more believable. And people say, well, Because of that interview, the police gave the other day, or the chefs gave the other day. Perhaps it'll take the pressure off the mother and the stepfather. Well, no. No, it won't. Until they come out and say to, in a press release, that the mother and stepfather are not persons of interest, have been cleared, then in my eyes, they are still persons of interest. And no, and as Seth said, no one will be cleared because it's an active investigation. Even himself, he's not cleared. He admits it. He's not cleared. And he won't be cleared until the investigation is over. Well, that's... Oh, God. This cat, if it's not the cat, it's my grandson tonight and I'm going to pull my hair out. But anyway... That's their house. So I'm still stuck in this house. Because I cannot see a child not having any scent around this house. No dogs picked up on any scent around this house. However, in that audio, it says a dog picked up on a scent. Now there's a woman who's released audio And she has enhanced it, so it's a lot clearer. 
And I'm sure I've got it on my Facebook page. Hold on. It is a lot clearer. And she's got the subtitle to it now. So let's see where it is. Right. So we're going to listen to this. Right. Into the, into the water. Yeah, do you see any 
on branch around it. There's a few uh, footprints in some of the softer dirt uh, headed straight this way on the trap that he was running. 12 47, what size shooters do you wear? Size 10, 25 central. All right, two staffer course. Go ahead. Do we have a picture yet? That's important. Can you send it to me, please? Me too, send drop out. Staffer, court call. Where the rear path is, uh, where the trees are, 25 feet maybe out in toward the middle. Here, you may want. Do we make one? Hi, guys. The construction zone, there's another pond. There's somebody standing in the woods. It's a, it looks like a person. It is a person we know, but there's another pond. He's standing back there by himself. Past the construction zone in the same area back there. Is that to the north of us? Yeah, the, the north end of it, yeah. Where they're working on the machinery at, go straight back. There's another pond back there, but there's a person in the woods uh, by that pond. Past the house on the other side of the tree line. Going back toward beach or going on the back side? Yeah, on the back side, and he's not moving. He's just standing there by himself in the woods. It's Hendersonville 517. I'm on the northeast corner in the cemetery across the tree line. Am I close? No, the back side. Mickey, if you can, do you have anybody there with you that can drop a what rewards location? Stand by, uh, let me see if I can find them on my map. I got my drone ground for the moment, and I'll see if I can do it. Bird gets over. One of the two. I'm in my truck going up to the corner. Can you see us? I am told us. I'm going to jump in with you. Two, there's four of us on foot coming across the yard to start directions. 19, I'm saying. Everybody's on the ATV right there in that field. Drive straight to the woods. Or straight in, straight in. Keep going like you're going. Keep going. Go left, go left. He's come back, he passed it. Look at his throat on foot on the other side, pick us up and tell us which way to go. Yeah, we only have one drone, we don't want to get off the target, and we got somebody close to it. All right, somebody's walking straight to it right there. So walk, walk, there's two people right there. Walk, walk like you're going, walk like you're going, straight. Into the woods, in the woods. You should be about 15 foot from it. What's the child's first name? She'll be all over it, whatever it is right there. The two people walking the woods. It's a mannequin. Sorry, guys. Look just like a person from the air. Here's an old 66. Here's an old 66. What's the name of the child that we're looking for? First name is Sebastian. I'm sorry, can you repeat that? First name is Sebastian. We have a last known uh, physical description. How you call him? Last. Clothing description was black sweatpants with a white stripe, black long sleeve t shirt with a print. service. Nikki, how many drones do you all have up? One at the moment. I've got mine ground so I can get Sark Topo up. I'll be back in the air momentarily. 10 4. Central on scene. Put two out here, will we? Rice calling, please. 10 more. Who's at the residence? I just got back here. And for has anybody been there since the initial? There's a whole bunch of people here. Uh -huh. 12 to 55. 12 to 55. Yes, sir. Can you help me listen to the radio on the north end until we wrap this up, please? Yes, sir. Brandon, you've got uh, Hendersonville Mountain Patrol coming up there, and Joe's sending some more cars. If y'all want, if we can start from the beginning in the original house and set up a new plan up there. Yeah, boy, that's what we're doing now, sir. Thank you. 63 Central Clear, false call. Oh, you as a neighbor advised that he's found the child under his under his son's car, which is across the street, two doors up. So be sure and search under cars and under things. Go ahead. 
Who do you want to go with this other canine search and rescue? Several. Eric Kenneth, HFC is down here at the end of the road. I'm going to direct him to the phone. Go ahead. I just talked to the GC, the construction back here. He's going to start I'm getting the word out to all his crews that are out here working. Yeah, well, thank you. He's going to have them check all their current under construction sites that they're working on and they report back. Yeah, well, is associated with 1008 staff report. Supposed to be coming back to the 1008 staff report so we can get a game plan and reconvene. Hey, Target, can you put a drone right over top of this trash can, this dumpster, see if there's anything in it? 12. All the buildings are very clear. Hey, boy. Come back to 1008. We're going to put two long groups. Send up. Hey, boy. 16 Central. In service with B12. 12 Central. 16 will be control supervisor. I'll be seeing commander at 1008. JLR investigates got right. So that was a bit of understanding from the first one we heard. Because I don't know about you, but I don't know all the jargo they use. You know what I mean? Ten four, ten seven. You know me. I'm finding a mannequin in the woods. Oh my god. And a mannequin would look like a real person, wouldn't it? Just standing there. So that she will she's working on the rest of it. Right? And she, I, when she's done it, when she's finished it, she will re release it. And I will play it on here when it's released. She's very good at doing what she does. Anyway. Let's see what else we've got today. Right. Right, let's have a look. Um let's go on X, see what we've got on here. Uh X control. Notification. Hold on a minute, please. Hold on. Anyway, so... Uh, yeah. This is the live. Hold on. This is the live with. Oh, I can never remember his name now. No, no, versity, no, versity, no, versity, right? Is I will put his link in the description. So please go and su subscribe to him. It's really good, really, really good. 
and he covers a lot of cases, a lot of cases. Anyway, but he's doing a live when Chris come in the chat. I think Chris is in the chat. Anyway, this is round about just before Chris comes on the live. A minute or so before. So we'll start it here and we'll listen to it. But this is heartbreaking. This one part is just just utterly heartbreaking. So I hope you do understand that. Yeah. I mean, every podcaster that I've gone on, I've actually reached out to you first. Oh, okay. 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 And um, just, I, I know there's probably certain things that you cannot say. There's certain things you can say. Seth. Yeah, it is an active investigation. Yeah, it's an active investigation. But let me, I'm, I'm going to have to ask you, Seth, because I, I, I'm going to, I want I, to help. I'm very passionate about this and I really want to help. Is there anything that you can say about any new details because of this update that they just gave us this morning? Is there anything that you can say to us that you can provide? Um, well, my volunteers are the ones that found the glasses. Whoa, wait, wait, wait. Your volunteers? Mm -hmm. Sebastian. Jada, it was his volunteers, Seth Rogers' volunteers. That found those glasses. Not the police, not the sheriff, not the TBI. He's volunteers. Because it's his volunteers that are out there, feet on the ground, knocking on doors, posting through flyers. You know what I mean? Since army. Wait, wait, time out. They, they didn't, hold on, PD and their search team didn't find the glasses? Your volunteers found it? My volunteers found it, yes. I didn't watch the press conference. They say that they found them. Your volunteers found the, and, 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 let me ask you, since you, you know, you're, you're his father, can you confirm that it is his glasses? Like, just by looking at it, can you, can you confirm? I looked at the glasses and I had them back and tag them because if they're not his glasses, they are really close. I mean, they're close enough that I asked them to bag and tag them and take them and as evidence. Mm. I'd say I'm 90% sure, but there's always that 10%, not to mention I haven't got to see my son's glasses and month and like three weeks right so they're not not really fresh in my mind and they didn't seem to have a lot of wear and tear on them and they were only scratched around the nose piece <laughs> so I What is going on? My internet is playing up like hell. <coughs> I think it's the weather we're getting. Because <coughs> in the UK, we have when we come to April, people think, oh, we're getting nicer weather. And my mum always used to say to us, don't go out the house without a coat in April. Why? Because you have rain. Literally, the whole of April will get rain. So, and that's what we're getting at the moment up here in Scotland. Rain. We had a lovely day Sunday. Then Monday was so so. Yesterday was horrible. Today is even worse. So, but I don't know what's going on.
You guys are saying that Sebastian's dad is in the chat. I got you. All right, so I'm just wiping right my internet to pump very properly. This is ridiculous. But it's a common thing in the UK. If we get bad weather, we're going to have bad internet. We really do. And I think they need to work on the um, internet thing. Because if you think the internet is what, Everything is wrong on nowadays. Flipping out, even your money is worked on the internet. If the government had it their own way, there'd be no such thing as cash. They really wouldn't. It'd all be your bank card, no cash. Cash would become uh, part of history. But I don't understand what is going on here. Come on. I didn't watch the press conference. Did they say that they found them? Your volunteers found the. And, 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 let me ask you since you, you know, you're, you're his father, can you confirm? That it is his glasses, like just by looking at it. Can you can you confirm? I looked at the glasses, and <laughs> I had them back and tag them because if they're not his glasses, they are really close. I mean, they're close enough that I asked them to bag and tag them and take them in as evidence. Mm. I'd say. Hey, I'm 90% sure, but there's always that 10%. And now yeah, it's dark to annoy me. Because I pay a lot of money, you know what I mean? It's not cheap thing. At 10%, not to mention, I haven't got to see my son's glasses in a month and like three weeks. Right. They're not really fresh in my mind. And they didn't seem to have, have a lot of wear and tear on them. And they were only scratched around the nose piece. So I don't know. And, uh, Could they be his? Yes. Could they maybe not be his? Yes. Am I waiting for the test to come back? Yes. So they're doing a DNA test on these glasses, correct? Well, they're doing, they're either doing, they're doing whatever test they need to do. Yeah. So I'm pretty sure that they will see if there's any DNA on them. And I'm pretty sure they'll check the prescription lenses with his last prescription mm. okay and i do have um i do have an address that you said that where the glasses was and is it 210 hutch correct yeah so uh, it was like i said i wasn't with my volunteers when they found On them, they they turn around and let some 
somebody know. I turned around, said, send me the pictures. Let me see them. They, they sent them to me. I was like, those are, by the pictures, look look like my son's glasses. Flagged down uh, a deputy sheriff and had him wait for my volunteers to show up to give them to him so there'd be a chain of evidence. Right. And you found these, they, your volunteers found, the, found these glasses west of Hutch Court, correct? Like near Somewhere Shack, Shack Island, right? This is where I find the glasses. Round there is where Chris's, Chris Craigbrook's mother and stepfather lived. And two days after Sebastian is reported missing, they drive, I believe, to Alaska. Drive. Someone said the only reason you drive to Alaska from here to Alaska is if you was transporting something you couldn't take by plane. So I don't know. But then another woman said there's security on the um, border of Alaska because you have to go through Canada. It's very strict. Now. I'm sure they would have checked car boots, everything. But I wasn't looking for a child. Because don't forget, there were sheriff's departments in neighbouring areas that knew nothing about this. Knew nothing about Sebastian. So why would someone in Canada know anything about Sebastian? As long as they can prove that is their grandson, they're going to let them through. So, hold on, I'm just trying to get this back again. If it's not Riley Strain or Madeline Soto, I'm talking about your son. And then all I hear is his father, his father, Seth, Seth, Seth. And I don't know your relationship with Chris or Katie, respectfully, but I have not heard anything of them putting in the same energy as you. Is that correct? Can you, can you like at least agree with me on that? Or am I, I maybe I got my resources wrong, Seth? Is there, is there some discrepancy? Am I wrong? Mis I, I don't like fake news. I don't. I like facts. So I'm asking you, have they put that energy there? What, what you have been doing? Don't know. I mean... I have my, I have Sebastian's army. You know, I ask for volunteers every day to show up to help me. Those that do show up, we send them out normally with flyers. We've got a couple dive teams out too that have volunteered to help. I mean, I'm just, I just want to find my son. I want to bring him home. I want to keep him out of the hell that I guess he's been in that I didn't know about. I want to apologize for not knowing. Seth, you don't have to. You, everything that I've been hearing, you're in this child's life. Seth, out of all my cases, I've heard terrible fathers, Stephen Stearns, people like that, that I have worked on cases close to these families. And you're going to apologize. You don't need to apologize. 
how, how could you have known? You're, everything has been pointing out to you being a loving <laughs> father. And you're out there looking for your son. And he disappears in the house where Chris is at. Where, no disrespect where Katie's at. Not your house. You are doing a phenomenal job. And I know you want to find your son. And I know that. You got have, you have people in my chat that DM me. I got hundreds, Seth, of messages. People in my chat right now saying they can hear the pain in your voice. And we know that. That's why I do this for you. I do this for yourself. Absolutely. You're a phenomenal father. Don't take that away from you, brother. Please. And I know you said that you didn't know this was going on. And I want to ask you that. When we talked about that, so did Nancy Gray. I piggyback backed off of her. When Chris said that of disciplining your child, was you not known of that? No. I wasn't. And, and let me tell you something about that, Steph. You can go back to my podcast. And I said this, and correct me if I'm wrong. I said, and I knew, if you would have known about that, you definitely would have done something. Is that correct? Of course. Absolutely. Because you got people like this man named Chris who abuses his former partner's child. How dare he do it to a child that's not even his. And that... And this guy is speaking for all of us. If Chris can backhand a three-year-old, what could you do to a 15-year-old? Right? That's where we apologize to you. Because if you didn't know, I'm going to apologize. Because no man should do that. A 15-year-old boy who has... As autism, a sweet boy. The way that you have this, this every, every interview that I watch of you, the way you describe him. Why? Could now, now, now that could have been even a small motive of him disappearing. For all we know, I'm, allegedly, I don't know. I don't know, and I'm very careful with my words, Seth. For all that we do know, and all I want to know is, I don't want time. I don't have time for the United Cajun. There's all this beef between a podcaster and them. I don't care. I care about finding your son. And you have provided the most details of all, all the interviews that I ever watched. Now, you're, you're going to sit here and tell me that your team found the glasses? Why TVI is telling me they have found it and they can neither confirm, but you can at least give me a small confirmation to say, I'm, I'm sure, but I'm not, I can't confirm. And I appreciate that because the public is trying to help you. Who said it? Nancy Grace said it. Vinny said it. I'm saying it. Yes, the public is important. Social media is important. Don't let them tell you that it's not. You over here on different podcasters, you came to me. It is important because we're digitally sharing the, your son's information. Everything that you have been saying, Seth, I have displayed on my podcast because it matters and it helps and people are out there. I want to say thank you to you for not only being a great dad, but for helping me help you. And I'm going to do whatever I can to use all my followers on Facebook and, so, and, and, and YouTube and TikTok to help you. And I'm, I'm sorry for what you're going through. At least we can piggyback off the biggest clue that you were able to find was the glasses. Now, according to this map, and I, I don't want to digress here. According to this map, that what you just gave me the address is 13.4 miles. That's 22 minutes by car drive. With this direction, has law enforcement know from 1008 Stanford Court heading east that any camera could pick him up? Do they know, like, they, they have searched ring cameras in all areas, correct? Do you know that? Uh, I know they've been searching in the neighborhood that the mother and stepfather lived. They've been searching all that video. Hmm. And not one camera from the surrounding, mind you, I count every house here. It's over 35 homes. Not one camera picked up Sebastian. Not that they told me. Unbelievable. Okay. All right. From that being said, not one camera picked up Sebastian. All right. So, Sebastian, they come out this way. All right. That camera, that camera, that house, this house, this house. Maybe got a camera on it. This house, we know has got a camera on it. We know this house has. You tell me. He gone up this way, all the way up to the top, to the construction site. 
인형에 대해서 할수 있어. 빅진 결국 못했어. 인형의 법. Or even if he managed to cut through some hair. 인형에 대해서 할수 있어. 완전야. Picked him up. It can't. It doesn't make make it make sense, please. Can someone make it make sense for me? Because now there has been many rumors, and I don't like it, and that's why I'm I'm glad I'm talking to you. His his shoes were still at home, correct? Yes. Were they ever thrown out? What do you mean? Were they ever thrown out? Um, there, there's, there's been rumors, and I'm not saying this, but his shoes being thrown out, or. Um, his shoes were still all there, and he, yet he went missing. The only thing that was taken was a keychain. Is that correct? Uh, it was supposedly a flat, uh, like a keychain flashlight, mm -hmm. something you'd win at, like, uh, if you're playing ski ball and got tickets, things like that. Uh, <laughs> I see, but his phone and everything was still left behind. Correct. Now, I did hear that his, uh, uh, Chris, Chris's grandparents left to uh, Alaska just a couple of days after. Did you hear about that? I heard about that. I heard about that the day they returned. It was only the grandparents that it was. It was a couple days, correct? Did you, uh, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, Seth, I'm here. Um, I, I'm sorry if, I, if if it's a lot. I don't. I don't mean to, you know, bombard well, you with questions. Not, I, I do not, apologize. It's I, not a lot. It's not a lot. It's just the fact that. You know, I didn't know. I mean, I, I didn't know. I wasn't, I mean, I, as a father mm -hmm. that is divorced, you know, I expect her to, to go on with her life just like I'm going to go on with mine. The difference is, you know, I take things, I guess I feel more strongly about things. So. I'm sorry. I agree with what he says there. That divorce. She goes on with her life, he goes on with his, right? But when you've got children, or a child, hold on. Okay. When you've got children or child, then you have to get in contact. That's why when people say, look, it's out of being a bad marriage. And someone says, did you have children? And they say, no. And I will say, that's a good thing. Because now you can make a complete break. Right? You will not have to have no contact with that person again. Nothing. But if you have children, then... I swear to God, this cat is going to drive me the wall. If you have children, you are... And try and be that person for the rest of your life, really. Where to go, Pat? No, don't be going like that. You're in contact with that person until they're at least 21, 25 years old. You know what I mean? So. Even longer because my son's 33 now, but if his father's alive still, God bless this boy, he isn't. But his father's alive, um, and something happened with my son, I'd still be in contact with my with the father. You know what I mean? Because it's his son as well, and she should have told him. It's like that message that Chris. When he phoned Chris up that day after he got to his car and Chris had sent him this text message, call me back 911. And Chris says it so calmly, like, don't get mad. But Sebastian is missing. Now, hold on. That isn't what I'd be saying. I'd be going, <laughs> uh, Seth, have you seen, Sebast have you seen Sebastian? Has Sebastian been in touch with you? Because he's not at home. But nothing like that. It was, don't get mad. But Sebastian's gone missing. 
And then I'm going to stay really calm and cool and collective, knowing that my son's gone missing. Oh, yeah. But not one word was said about, have you seen Sebastian? Have you heard of Sebastian? He's not here. He's gone missing. He's walked out. He's left the home. You know what I mean? Nothing like that. Why didn't the mother phone him straight away? But well, apparently she did. Apparently the child phoned him. But like I said, with his work, he's got two phones. He's got a work phone. He's got his personal phone. Right? His work phone, I should imagine, he leaves at work. And his personal phone, he leaves in his car. Right? So it wasn't until he got back to his car that he picked up his phone, turned to on or whatever he'd done, and seeing all these messages come through and these missed phone calls. And that was about 20 past 7 in the morning. Well, I'm sorry, but if that had been me, and I was trying to get in touch with my with the father of my child, and I couldn't get him on his phone, I'd be phoning his commander. You know what I mean? I'd be phoning his place of work to get in touch with him. So then he's straight down to her house. He got there about 8 o'clock in the morning. Chris, Chris Proudfoot, who's the mouthpiece of it all, didn't get there till about 1 p.m. or later in the afternoon, even though it took three and a half hours to get home, three hours to three and a half hours, right? Now, it said he was working. When she phoned him, he was working. Because he had to get someone to come and cover his job. That was at 20 past six. Apparently, the crane operators or any construction workers do not start work till 7 a.m. Now, bear in mind, this is by a hospital. You do not want to be woken up at 6 a.m. with cranes going on and builders going on about their business. 7 a.m., yeah, from that 5.30, 6 a.m. in the morning. So apparently there's a, a law, uh, there's a law or something there where crane operators, construction site operators, do not start work till 7 a.m. So, like, I've been divorced for, like, eight years now. Right. And the only person that stays in my house is Sebastian. Uh, I, I, you know? I believe, I think I know what you're trying to say is that you don't know much because of how long you were divorced and whatever happens there was not either communicated with you or you just, you were just divorced. I was divorced. She was no longer a part of my life. The only thing that connected her to me was our son. Yeah, okay. And I... I don't stick my nose into their business, which is why I didn't know a lot of the stuff that was going on. Hmm. And I guess maybe I should have. Yeah, but something like this, you could have not known. You were involved in your child's life. You can only do so much. I'm just, it hurts when I hear from the news that they at one point stopped talking to you. Is that correct? Or am I, I want to I get this correct and I want to get the facts right. They didn't talk to me for like two weeks. And then uh, all of a sudden, you know, I'm told that his phone is always open. And, and well, mine's always open, too. Lately, it's been a lot more busier than normal. And I've been out looking for my son, handing out flyers. I don't hide where I'm at. I mean, it's pretty much easy to find where I'm at. I let social media and the news know where volunteers can come in to help and i'm normally there you know two weeks is a long time seth that was after sebastian went missing mm -hmm. two weeks two weeks the woman you had a child with did not talk to you two weeks yeah she normally doesn't talk to me anyways 
Yeah, but she that, that's that but a boy is missing. How how again, I'm not trying to disrespect the mother of your child, but how dare she do that? She's the one that has to deal with her actions. I don't unbelievable. I just know what I'm supposed to do as a father. I'm I'm very sorry to hear this. You know, uh, it's I have my own consciousness to deal with. Right. And I can't I can't just sit still. My son is out there somewhere and I need to find him because I need him I need to bring him back to the family that loves him. Absolutely. Absolutely. Uh, I want to thank you for like confirming some of the things uh, that I hear. You know, it's it's difficult to separate the rumors from the facts. You definitely cleared some things up, um, especially with this glasses. You know, I, I I'm very surprised about what law enforcement have. You know, and and uh, again, I'm I'm not gonna I don't bash every law enforcement, but I do get in that ass and I don't play around, man. I do not. I I give them a pat on the back, absolutely. But I'm I'm you know, Seth, I've been doing this for so long that when they don't have nothing, they're repetitive. They are repetitive. They are repetitive. And I'm, it's, it's, it's mind boggling how you can come up with more stuff being the dad on the ground. It's mind boggling. It's quite impressive, I must say, Seth, I'm going to be honest with you. Because you've been out there every day, correct? Almost. There's some days that I've told people not to come out to search. Mm -hmm. Like Easter, I didn't want people to come out and search. People need to understand why I'm searching. So. They need to go spend time with their family. Right. You know, my family is missing. Absolutely. And they need to understand why I'm still searching. You know, like today it was bad weather. So I didn't have anybody out there. I mean, we were under a tornado watch. We had some, some hell at some places. I heard a lot that. of rain, heavy winds. And I don't want any of my volunteers hurt, injured, threatened. Absolutely. Is Intimidated. This... That stuff gets on my nerves. If you want to threaten or intimidate somebody, you can come threaten and intimidate me. Mm -hmm. I uh, I did, Seth, make a comment about that. About and Seth, uh, give me your opinion. Correct me if I'm wrong here. I was very upset that there were people, th like, I get it, the United Cajun Navy, and I, I don't wish to talk about Yeah, I know why these threats are going on. It's t and I know why the word threatening Seth, because Seth doesn't care. He doesn't care about the threat. He's there for one reason and one reason only, and that is his son. Right? So, but to threaten and harass the volunteers, it's to make them scared to go out. Like if they follow them, they can know where they live. They'll know if they've got children, if they've got family, and all this lot. They can track them and do, follow their routine, what they're doing, where they go shopping. It's just to intimidate them. And it's wrong. This boy needs to be found. And now if the family, if the mother and stepfather and his family are not prepared to help, then fine. Fine, don't. But don't harass and intimidate the volunteers that are giving up their time to look for your child. Your child. You won't harass and intimidate Seth because you know you can't get to him. But you will harass and intimidate the volunteers. I think it's disgusting. I think it's disgusting to the core. I have never heard of a case where volunteers have been harassed and intimidated. Never. Never in my life have I heard anything like this. So we'll continue. Bottom, I'm going to be honest. But I get it. They want to receive their credit. They want to do that. But they were still out there doing something. They were still boots on the ground. They were extra eyes. 
But for someone, I'm not going to say who this person was. It's a, it's a specific someone. I don't like saying this person's name. It's a it's a internet person. I am not a fan of. I know who's on about, and I like that YouTuber. And the only reason that I like that YouTuber went after United Persian Navy was because of how they treated him. Right? He was just going doing his normal business. Right? Okay, United Persian Navy didn't want anyone using their phones while out on searches. Fair enough. So because of that, this YouTuber said he wouldn't go on the searches. Right? Because he's, he was on the searches before and he was using his camera, but if they found anything, it stands right back until it got it all clear. Right? He wouldn't go, go oh, look, oh, look what we found here. He stands back. Right? Now, I like that because when I, he was on his, his searches, I used to watch the lives with him. And as this going around, I wasn't watching him. I wasn't even listening to him. I was watching and looking around what was on the floor, what was in the bushes, what was in the trees, everything. Right? Now, people could do that. And they, you might have someone spot something, which he doesn't. And they can put it in the comments. And he'll see it in the comments. And it's a real stuff. And he'd look. You know what I mean? It's extra eyes on the ground. Even though we're not there, we're virtual. We can see what's going on as well. But UCA did not want anyone doing live. Right? They didn't. And even Nancy Gray said, no, I want to see the live. I want to see it all. I don't want it edited. Right? Even Seth said when he went on the uh, first walk, first search with Seth on the Friday, Thursday. When's your Thursday? About two weeks ago now, before all this kicked off, before Cajun Navy, Navy came in. Right, said he didn't mind him going following him around on a live because it's getting the information out there. Right? But anyway, Cajun, so this YouTuber said, okay, fine, and he backed off. And one day he found out where Cajun, United Cajun Navy were. And he's drove up there. And this guy's come up to him very hostile and told him to leave. He was on private property. And he said, well, if I'm on private property, so are you. He wasn't on private property. He wasn't. And he's very hostile, this guy was, towards him. So he gets in his car and he drives off and he goes further away. He could still steal where they were. So you know what the Cajun United Navy, a uh, United Cajun Navy job reported him to the sheriffs, the law enforcement. So they come out and they even said to him, you're not breaking any law. In fact, some of these sheriffs officers watched this YouTuber. Right? So because of that, that was the wrong person to, I'll say it politely, piss off. Because then, this guy, this YouTuber, then changed his attention. Because Sebastian was getting enough attention, he really was. He's get, everyone was focused on Sebastian. So he then changed his attention from Sebastian to the United Cajun Navy. And UCN didn't like it because he was pulling up all this information about them. Right? And they didn't like it. 
And because of that, like, Harry called them out as being fraudsters, right? And Harry called them out on their lies and all this lot. People were going to help in the search, which I could understand. But then when Seth spoke one day, I said on my life, I said, you all know how I feel about the UCA. But for Seth, please, if you can, go and help with the search. You do not have to give out any information apart from showing some ID, right, so they can get your name, so that you can log yourself in, and then when you go back, when you come back in from your search, they can head count you in. So, say 20 people go out, 20 people come back. And if there's one missing, they know who it is, and they can go out and find them. If anything happens to that person and they get injured, they can contact the next day, next, whoever, the wife, the husband, whoever, the mother, the father, whoever they need to. And that is protocol. That's only right. You don't want to be sending people off without any information on them and not knowing how to get help for them. Right? But no, uh, they wasn't just doing that. They wanted people to donate. I'm sorry, but no. They're donating their time. Some people haven't got money to donate, but they have got time. But UCN wasn't happy with that. Right? So then, so then people wasn't going on these searches. And then all of a sudden, UCN start coming out and, are oh, they being threatened? They're getting threats and they're being followed and they're being shot at. Right? And they know where Sebastian is. But they can't get to him because it's on federal land. Well, I'm sure if you went to the TBI and told them all this information, they would get... TBI would take, take them on there so they can find this, find this lad. But they didn't. Right? They didn't go to the police about this information. They didn't go and report any threats. They said that in the interview yesterday, the press release, that UCA had not reported any threats. What? If you're being shot at, why aren't you telling the police? Right? So, and why don't you tell the police where this lad is if you know where he is but you can't get to him? Come on. Because it's all BS. At all. But this person had a disagreement with the United Cajun Navy and to just have them deter away because they received threats. It just it upset me. And I get it though. I get it. But they were extra eyes for your son. You understand? I mean, I know who the I know who the person you're referencing to. Yeah, I just don't like saying. But that. if you just, listen to it, mm -hmm. I understand. But if you listen to his podcast, mm -hmm. he doesn't speak ill of me. I think he lost focus of the fact that I'm the one that asked him to come in. They came in. I believe that their intentions were good. Mm -hmm. Right. But I believe they went about it the wrong way. Right. You know, um, there was faults on both ends, and how it was handled was not professional. I, 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 I believe. See, even Seth agrees there was fault on both sides, possibly, yes. More on the UCN side than that YouTubers. 
because he wasn't he he wasn't the only YouTuber they had to go at. There was another YouTuber they had to go at. But as the second YouTuber, Dolly Vision, he said, "I'll say who it is. It's JLR Investigate. He is the wrong person to pee off." Because it will just dig so deep that you can't get out of it. Right? Now, JLR is coming back to Tennessee this weekend. Yes! Get in there, JLR. And get... Now he knows that UCN aren't doing any of the searches. He'll probably join in again. He said, if UCN are not doing the searches, it will help with the searches. He will help. But he's not helping while you see him with it. And I can't blame him. I really can't. Because the way they, they spoke to him and treated him was disgusting. The way they went on, Nancy Grace, and made out they are the original Cajun Navy. They were the first team ever to start up as with the name United Cajun Navy. Yes, they was the first one to come up with United Cajun Navy, but the originals is Cajun Navy 2016. They started, they've shown proof who they are, when they started, everything. They don't ask for donations, they don't do none of that. And this is just Another organised group of people who have tagged on their t the tail of Cajun Navy U 2016. There's other groups called Cajun Navy, right? But the original is Cajun Navy 2016. And for the guy of the United Nations, United Cajun Navy, head guy, to sit there on Nancy Grace and make out they are the first team and everyone has tail coated off them is disgusting. I could not believe it when that guy said that. I watched that interview and I could not, I thought, what? What? Are you serious? You seriously got to sit there and say you was the first to come up with that name and all these other groups have just tail-coated off you. No. No. Cajun Navy 2016 will not have anything to do with United Nations, uh, United Cajun Navy. And all, you speak to any of the other Cajun Navy organisations, they all say the same about that United Cajun Navy. They all say the same. And they won't have nothing to do with them. And as for having more feet on the feet on the ground and going out searches, I think they did what two searches? One search was called off at 3 p.m. because they didn't have enough volunteers. I'm sorry. But well, one stage it was only Seth Brandon, I think his name is, and his another colleague of his, three of them out searching. And they'd be out from dawn to dusk. Now if you've only got five volunteers, that's five more than what Seth had. So why call it up? Why at three o'clock say, Well, we've covered this area, we'll go and cover this area. You know what I mean? Because that's what Seth was doing. They have their, like on that Friday before Cajun, United Cajun Navy come in, there's loads of volunteers out there. Right? And they all go off in their perspective groups. Right? Because JLR was jumping from one group to another. Right? And they all do their section, search their section. Right? And then once they search that section, they all go back again, meet up again, 
then go back out again and search other sections. So why can a United Cajun Navy do that? And then one day they called it up because bad weather. These are supposed to be uh, trained people who know how to search in bad weather. I can understand if you've got uh, strong winds and whatever forecasting, hail and rain and all these bad storms heading your way. Then fair enough, you do not go out searching no one do but for a bit of rain come on so we'll continue that there is a place for mainstream media and there's a place for social media and it's like in my interview i was like people need to drop their egos Thank you, because Seth. Because ego is not going to find my son. Perseverance and dedication will find my son. That and people coming forward and telling the truth. Like, if you have my son, please just drop him off at our opening gas station so I can come pick him up. Yeah. I said the same thing, Seth. I said the same exact thing that you just said that I want them to just drop their egos and focus, instead of attacking each other, find Sebastian. We're both on the same page here, so thank you so much. I, I thank you. Thank you. Um, I just have one final question and then I, I will let you enjoy your night, get some rest, and please be careful. I know with this tornado watch is insane. Please, please be careful, Seth. I grew up in Kansas. <laughs> <laughs> You're like, I can take this. <laughs> this ain't, this ain't Nothing, you know. Hey, Seth, listen, I'm a city boy, man. You can't judge me, man. I'm a city boy, okay? I'm a, I'm a Yankees man. I don't judge anybody. <laughs> I, I, you know, I'm an Atlanta Braves fan, so, you know, I, I won't judge you. Thanks, man. I get my I get my butt out there, man. <laughs> I get my butt out there to you, Seth, man. Listen, you're going to have to watch my back, man. I don't know the, I don't know the weather, the animals, man. You know, <laughs> I'm a city boy, man. <laughs> I could just imagine him out there in Tennessee. Going out and one of these thirds, going, oh my god, was that a snake? Oh my god, oh, was that a snake? No, no, it's okay. You know what I mean? I um, could just imagine well, you. Touch, touch him back. Um, my last question is you know, I, I don't want to be constructive here because I don't want to ask the same questions to every podcaster. I, I, Seth, is there anyone outside of that home? who knew Sebastian on a level where they were able to connect with him in, in, in some degree where he established a small rapport, anyone from school, a play park, or anything in that um, fashion. Maybe his teacher. I think his teachers would have been the ones that were able to establish a rapport, but that's because he was with them five days a week. Right. You, you might come a little closer to the mic, Seth. I'm sorry. No, I've got you in my blue, my blue too. Oh, oh so, okay, okay, okay. Um, I, I, what it is is I have this thing for my shoulder because I, I injured myself. Yes, so I, I saw it in the interview. Yeah, I saw you kept on uh, your, your right shoulder. You kept on rotating it. I paid attention to that. I saw that. It's a rotator cuff injury in that fashion, anything like that? No, it's a, I think I, I tore a muscle in my back. So Okay. Well, I, I really hope, you know, that, that, that gets better from you. Um, but uh, I, I can hear you better. It's no worries at all. So, yeah, you said just his teachers, correct? That That's it? Well, I mean, there was a lot of people at that school. The SROs have done, spoken with everybody. Um, I'm going to have, I'm going to reach out to the middle school and see if they can bring anything up because that's where he was at last year. Mm -hmm. But it's like the SRO, Sebastian was always smiling in school. The principal didn't have any problem with him. Teachers didn't have any problems with him. I mean, besides the normal stuff. I mean, kids are kids. They're going to make mistakes. This is when they're supposed to make mistakes and learn. Yeah. yeah. Make mistakes now. You're right. Don't Absolutely. make me like to long. Absolutely. Um, Seth, listen, I, I, I hope that I could stay in contact with you. 
I, I, I really mean this. I, I just want to, I just want to help. If, if there's anything that a message that I could spread for you, Seth, if there's anything, like anything, Seth, reach out to me personally. Uh, just, just please, Seth, anything. Hey, hey, no, this happened. Can you spread this? Hey, no, this happened. This, this, I, I'm there. Just, just, you know, I, I do podcasts every, every single, every single time. I research every single day. I mean, there, there's, there's a few things that people can do to help. All right. First and foremost, keep your head up, your eyes open. Uh, we're going to reach out to PBI and try to get some updated pictures. I had somebody work with the pictures and they removed his glasses just in case he doesn't have his glasses on so that they can see a picture the difference between him having his glasses and him not having his glasses. That's smart. Uh, hand out flyers to everywhere. everywhere just the more flyers out there the more information we might get that might possibly lead to another you know leak to find my son uh if anybody wants to donate to the cash app that's fine that helps us with materials oops well they go find me it helps with materials uh i do i have had some people want to know where i got my shirt from i think it's bonafide it's it's a web address. Um, okay. you can, can you, can you, can can you send me that, that image on through through text message? I yeah. have that link on my Facebook page. I will post it on my Facebook page. Should, should I image for me, like with a t shirt and stuff? Okay. Yeah. All right. That was that's 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 amazing. Uh, my last question: Are will you be doing any more interviews, like uh, to any stations anytime soon? I would love to tune in and watch. Um, actually, I have one in the morning with Nancy Grace. All right, tomorrow. In, yeah, in the morning. morning. Okay, that's perfect. I would love to chime in. I would love. I would love that. I would love that. I would love that. I, would uh, um, I have another one on Court TV on Thursday, and uh, tomorrow night there's another. There's a podcast interview I'm doing. I normally try to branch them out, but for some reason this week has been everybody has been getting a hold of me. So, and it's like Nancy Grace, I didn't know about until they called earlier today and they're like, hey, in the morning. Right. Absolutely. I'm like, oh, okay. Because it's national, you know, mm -hmm. possibly even farther than national. It's been over 30 days. My son could be anywhere now. Right. Absolutely. So, and the last thing I want is my son to, to end up going and becoming a cold case. I mean, that's. It's not what we want. Yeah, you're absolutely right on that. We don't want that. We don't. We don't want that at all. And thank you for um, thank you for reaching out, man. We're not. We're not. We, we gotta stay positive, man. This is this is this is what we this is what we gotta do. We gotta stay positive here, Seth. And I know you're out there. You said almost every day. So as long as you keep looking, there's hope. As long as you keep going, we all do our part. There's hope. There's something there. There's something there. There's something there. So I I really do believe that. I I really do. I really do. Thank you so much, uh, Seth. I appreciate that. Please uh, give me the information on through text, please, on uh, your GoFundMe and also your um, the the T-shirt. Can you please like, screenshot that information for me, please? I would like to. I I sent you uh, the cash app because my sister, the one sister, is the one that has the GoFundMe up. So I actually have to have her send that to me because I've lost the GoFundMe link somewhere. Um, there is a place to to increase the reward for finding Sebastian. And then I sent you the link for where the shirts are that I wear. Okay, I'm gonna check out the shirt. You said there's a link to increase the reward. I, I would love that link, please. It's not, it's not a link yet. I sent you the picture. It says to add to the reward for Sebastian Rogers. Checks must be mailed or dropped off at reward for Sebastian Rogers, James Brian Lewis, 1300 Division Street, Suite 307, Nashville, Tennessee. 37203. All donations will be held in escrow account. If you show up and drop it off, the attorney will write you a receipt. Just in I have this, that information on my Facebook page. And I will share it on with everyone I'm hearing a minute. Okay, so God forbid that we don't find them. The money gets returned to all those who have donated. Okay. All right. Right. I'm going to show this on the podcast. Guys, I got you guys in the chat. Just hold on, everybody. Hold on. Don't be repetitive. I got you guys all in the chat. Just please give me a second. 
um, there are people saying they have information and stuff, but I'm going to go through it and filter it myself before I provide you with any information myself. And um, I will do my best in my part to help out. Okay, Seth? I appreciate it. Everybody, everybody can help. Thank you, brother. I really appreciate you. We'll stay in contact, okay? Yes, sir. Oh, phone down. Let me just check that. Right, so as you can see, there it is. Let's see if I can get it bigger for you. Right. Right, there's the information if you want to add to the reward. I did hear something about the mother and the stepfather uh, putting a stop to people adding to the reward. But if you take it to straight to them and you put on it, reward for Sebastian Rogers. James Brian Lewis, 1300 Division Street, Suite 307, Nashville, Tennessee 37203. All donations will be held in an escrow account. Now, if Sebastian is found and the reward money is not needed, that everyone who pay has paid into it will get their money back. Okay, so say you just paid ten dollars in, you'll get if it's not needed, they will send that money back to you. I've also got here the GoFund link. If you want to go and help there, please do. And um, oh yeah. this is oh yeah, I'll go down here. Oh yeah, it's coming up. This is where you can order. If you'd like to order a crew neck sweatshirt and you get it in black, dark heather, navy, Irish green or forest, or you can get the premium, premium unisex t-shirt, which are all in the same colours as before, apart from storm and charcoal and navy. Or you can get the pullover hoodie. I like the pullover hoodie. I like my hoodies. Right. Or for the women, you can go in all them colours, the charcoal, indigo. Yeah, I always thought indigo was like a purpley colour, pinky purpley colour. I don't know. Or a storm. Or hot pink. I like that one. Or Kelly Green. And I like that one. Right, so that's what it says on it. says, have you seen me? You're walking on the billboard. Now, to be honest with you, I would. If I was in the USA, I'd buy something like that. But I'm not. I'm in the UK. So... Unless I hear or say someone saying it could be in the UK or it could be in Scotland, where I am, then I'll buy one. Because then, apart from doing my YouTube lives like I do, I'll also be a walking billboard for him. Right? Now, some people have... It's just mentioned, and I did do 
I did use this picture and then I've deleted it because I weren't sure if it's the right picture to use. And after I deleted it, I've still got it on my tab laptop, but I deleted the photo art I do using it. And it's a picture of Sebastian with no glasses. In case he has lost his glasses and he is going about with no glasses on. So I will put that on my Facebook page and I'll share it on my Twitter account and my Instagram. Okay? I'll have it all on there. This link will go onto my X account and onto my Instagram account. As I said, I've got it on my Facebook page at the moment. So if you want to buy that, then do so. The GoFundMe link is in the description. But you'll also find it, believe it or not, on my Facebook page. And I think I've got it on my Twitter account. So if you just scroll through, you'll see it. But I might refresh it and so that it comes up again. There was something else I wanted to talk about. What was it now? Um, what was it now? I want to make sure I cover everything I want to talk about tonight. If I can't remember, I'll, uh, I will remember. It will come. To, it normally comes to me when I finish a live. I think, oh my God, that was it. But I've got crime stories with Nancy Grace up and ready. But nothing is up there yet. As you can see, the podcast it's not lit there yet. If it was, it would be here. And you can just click on it and play. But there's nothing there yet. So she hasn't released the podcast yet. They normally release the podcast first and then the YouTube video. So if so, it'll look like I'll be doing a live about that tomorrow. Um, oh, no. No. we talked about this sex offender. He is lovely guy, isn't he? Just four minutes drive away from families with their children and a school. Oh, and believe it or not, hold on. It's four minutes drive away from there, but Um, let's get rid of that. Right. Uh, right. That's Sebastian's home. And I know she's found here. Oh, look, a Burns Day School. And he's four minutes. He's only four minutes away from Stafford Court. Because if you come up here, this way. I Burns Gay School. So if he's four minutes away from his Stafford Court, if he's to carry on, he's four minutes away from their school. Beach High School. And look, there's the middle school. I 
Because I went for something to eat and it was down this way. Down this way somewhere on a Sunday. Let's see if I can find the restaurants. Right, let's have a look. Calm out now. Uh, oh god. I can't remember the name of the place, but I know it was around this way somewhere. Bella went for a meal on a Sunday because they said it took 12 minutes from wherever they went home. And I know the map shows going along this road here, along here, here. Because look at this. They've got video of Sebastian leaving this restaurant with his mother on Sunday night, about six ish. <coughs> could be between six and twenty past six. <coughs> It's by that time it was dark, right? Now we know where we lived up here, there's no street lights, but there's lighting from all the houses. So it's not pitch black. But the house opposite I would say, I'm not sure if it's that house or this house. <coughs> <coughs> well, if you've seen him come out the garage with the trash can, I'd say it's this house. Catch normally gets, you know, they normally see him on his, um, on the, pardon me, on the ring doorbell. <coughs> oh, do But they said they couldn't tell who it was because it's pretty dark. Now they said they had their garage lights on. Right? Oh, it's just okay. See? Garage lights. The lights. Now, surely that would have gave some light off. We've been bringing the bins down to the roadside or down to here or wherever. But I'd say it's this house here. Yeah, I'd say it's this house here. That would normally get him on. Their ring doorbell. Right? But they said it was too dark for them to tell who it was. They couldn't tell whether it was uh, Sebastian or not. So. I want to check something out. Can't really see in this picture. Uh, but anyway, so that house across the road. I'd say, I don't think it would be them because that's their ring doorbell. Go. Their ring doorbell might catch them coming out of theirs, out the front door. 
right? But I don't think it will catch him being in the trash can down. But this house here. Mm. This house here will catch him. Being in the trash out. So that has there with being on catch them being in the trash out. Oh god, I'm not in. That's better. And that house, I'd say, will catch you coming out the front door. So if you come out the window, it would be too dark for that doorbell camera to catch you. Because there's no lights on the front of this house. They've got no home security lighting. Now, in a house where that costs that as much as it does, I'd have so much security on it, you wouldn't even be able to step onto that grass back, this bit here, without someone catching you. Right? As soon as a car pulled up and stopped, it would catch you on it. But apparently she works for a company that deals with all this home installation, air security and everything. And it's just got none, they've got none on their own house. And that footage, I don't think it was the back of the houses. I really don't. I think that footage didn't come from any of these houses. Because if that was the case, what would trash men be doing up there? The trash people wouldn't be up there because the, the lorry was here on the road. So... So if they was coming out to get the trash, if the lorry people were getting the trash, they, they, they'd be getting the bins from there. So the lorry would be like here. Because you just attach it to these big arms on the back and the arms lift it up and tip it in. Right? So I think it was the front of the houses where we've seen these. And don't forget, they've got fluorescent jackets on. So they, they would light up. That's why the lights aren't that bright. Because it's fluorescent jackets they've got on. And I think maybe this house. Or another house maybe. I still think. I still think it was down here. Down this way. Right? Because I think the lorry was probably parked down there and those people were walking there. So it's one of these houses. Because the lorry was caught on the end of the picture so it's probably say this house here quarter and then the lorry just came into vision at the but like at the bottom of the screen like there so I think the lorry is parked around there and the just been me the trash mate were walking along here I really do. I don't think it was up by their house. I think it's down here. I don't think it was at the back of their house now. Because that big light. Oh, no. I found it. Huh. <coughs> 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 
that big light on the bottom corner. That was the trash cart, the trash lorry. Oh yeah, that's what I wanted to mention. I understand that she's left the family home again. And she's gone down to... Where is it? Where her uh, husband's working. And they're living in the five-wheeler. Why is she done that again? I do not know. Well, her son is missing. <coughs> Is it because last time she came home, <coughs> the TBI called her <coughs> called her and Seth into the their offices. So that I was able to talk to her without him being there. Well, she's with him. Now, they'll have to talk to both of them together. So, um, that's what I was going to mention is about the fact that apparently she's moved out of the house and she's gone to live down there. Right, here it is. Right. Look. Here it is. That's some security houses. I thought it was a car. Might be a car. That is fluorescent jackets. Right. Being hit by trees or whatever. Yeah. But what's this corner? Do you see something moving in a minute? Tell me it isn't something walking, walking. Hang on, I'll see if I can get it bigger. No, I can't. Huh? Oh, there it is. Tell me that isn't someone walking. And all of a sudden, this light source comes in. Yeah? And you've got these two little light sources here. These are fluorescent jackets. And I just think it's the light source from that and that that are lighting them up. Because they're not that bright. And they have to wear fluorescent jackets to be seen. That is the truck. Right, subject two goes off the screen in a minute because he's walking down the down the embankment or whatever. But what's that corner? That is what got me the first time I seen it was that. But everyone threw me off by saying, oh no, I still think it's two people. But now I think about it, I think they're my fluorescent jackets I wear. Because look at this, where my little mouse is, my little finger is. There's someone else walking towards a truck. And these lights all come on.
That's why I say, I think the truck was round here somewhere, and those people we saw were round here. And I was walking along here to get their bins. Right? The truck would then come round the corner, they pick these bins up here. <coughs> oh, sorry. Right, I'm done. I'm done. I'm not here. So, what am I got on here? What am I watching? Sorry about that. I want to share stop screen. Yeah. I'm sorry, I thought I'd share it with you. I wasn't. I had some else going. I have to be joking. Huh? Oh, God. Right. Uh, Oh. Crap. But please look at this again. I mean, I can get back down to it because then, as I said, I have heard that she's packed her bags and she's left to go and leave down Memphis, yes. Mississippi. Mississippi, I thought that was in Memphis. Perhaps it is Mississippi. But who leaves their home when your child is missing? You know what I mean? Who does that? As Mississippi got different extra, as Mississippi got extradition laws. I don't know. Perhaps someone could tell me that. I mean, but to be honest with you, I'm glad I don't live in Tennessee because if a child of mine went missing, I'd hate the TBI to have to be involved. Because when she said just doing that interview, going through all the home security videos and door to door, door to door ring bells is a chore. That really got to me. I thought, no love. It's not a chore, it's your job. Right? Then my hand slides, I know that much. Right? But you watch down in this corner. Look in this corner, you know. I'll see if I can get bigger again. Can I get it bigger? Come on, can we get it bigger? Yeah. Look in this corner. To see it now, right? Just coming into view where my little finger is. Just there. That is someone else walking there. That's why I say it, I think it's on the corner of that room. Because these two bodies that you see are walking that way right now
Right. So they're walking that way. They're walking towards the next house. Right. Why subject two came back on the screen like a few minutes later? I do not know. Right. But that is definitely a big. Oh God, get back up there. That's a, a truck. Let's watch it again. I knew from day one when I first seen it, something wasn't right. And I kept saying, it's torches, it's torches. I know, I said it, I said it. But I didn't think of the truck. I, I was going by what Nick Ferris said. It was 3.10 in the morning. So I'm thinking perhaps it was torches. And that was home security, and this was some house at the back of theirs, all lit up for some reason. But that is definitely someone else walking there. Scientists issued burglary warning. A hundred times worse than COVID. Right, yeah, right, okay. There's always something. That's definitely a big vehicle. Is it got? You do not say? Anyway, what was that? Blessings. Are you okay? I'm okay, got, I got changed. Yeah, I'm okay. I'm a lot better than what I was yesterday. I wasn't going to come on this live tonight, but it's just that all the information that was coming out today, I thought, no, I need to do a live. And I said to my grandson, who's with me, because that's why I, I wasn't going to do a live, because I had my grandson here. And he said, you can do your live, Grant, once I've gone to your bed. Because I'll be in your bed watching TV. I said, are you sure? He said, yes. I think for the first half hour, maybe the first 45 minutes, I had him coming back and forth. <laughs> but he's a little sweetheart. He's gone, he's gone now, he's gone to the room and he's been there all night now. So, anyway, so with all that information that's come out today about the fact that it was the volunteers of thefts, volunteers, he calls them Sebastian's Army, right? were the ones that found the glasses only yesterday well, no not yesterday the day before yesterday which was what well, monday because tuesday they did that the police did that press release and claimed and claimed the fact that they found the glasses no it was our volunteers who were out there putting post leaflets through the door who found the glasses. And Seth was that sure, 90% sure, but he said there's always that 10% sure uncertainty because he hadn't seen his son well, six, nearly eight weeks now, he has not seen his son. So, it's easily said, you know, that I can't be sure that his glasses book. I'm 90% sure. So he's that sure he got them to bag them and tag the bag. 
and get your TBO. That's how short that was he knew those Sebastian. But TBI have now come back saying they're not his glasses. Which is fair enough. You know what I mean? But um there's some on this uh, Facebook page. I want to show you. And it's about the mother. Something about the mother up and leaving. <coughs> <coughs> What's that? Yeah, I'm not. Sometimes you look too much, and it's just a shadow. <coughs> so, but there's something come here about her. Moving down to wherever her uh, husband is. But as I said, this is so, so many people post on here. It, I don't know how to keep up with them all. Uh, But I, I wish I know I'd shared it, but they don't have it set for shared. You can send it to Messenger, but you can't share it to another page. It's a bit annoying. Oh, look, it says there, right, hold on, as, as officials continue to search for 15-year-old Sebastian Wayne Drake Rogers, the autistic Sumner County team who disappeared in February, investigators say they are hopeful the boy might still be alive and his family has been made cooperative and communicative despite his mother and stepfather recent move to Memphis. Are you kidding me? You know what I mean? Uh, who leaves their home when their son or child? I met someone mentioned this the other week. I think in another post, and someone's mentioned here. Have they looked to see if he had prescription filled somewhere, or counted his meds that would be at the house, and doing the maths to see if it's correct from the day he went missing? No, I talked to my son about this. Because if they have gotten somewhere, 
and they are giving him his medication, then they've got to renew his medication. But I'm sure TBI will be on top of that, surely. Uh, a lot of people come on here about psychics and all that lot. Yo, I'll tell you now, I've got a feeling um, there was a, I'm sorry, I'm a bit blocked up, I'm really blocked up, right, I've got a feeling something happened in January, end of January time, end of January, beginning of February, with Chris and Sebastian. And I think that was when DCFS was called in. And I think Chris was told to leave the family home until the case got closed. Right? And that's why he went to down to Memphis in his five-wheeler. Right? Which I can understand. Okay? Paid for hotels and motels. What people come on this game is why wouldn't you come back on the weekend? I I've got a feeling he he wasn't allowed to come back on the weekend. Not while Sebastian was there. Not while they had an open not while DCFS had an open case. Well, I can't find that information out. I did see it earlier today, but as I said, there's so many people that post on that page. It's, it's mind-boggling. Some of it is repetitive. Like, they go on about, um, well, I don't know, the security system, the bins. Did anyone catch him after a certain time? I don't think this is just my opinion. And I'm entitled to my opinion. I think between him leaving that restaurant and getting in the car and driving off, something happened. Right? Because no way, even the woman whose doorbell caught something on her doorbell being in the rubbish trash out, couldn't they couldn't tell for definite if it was Sebastian. Well, I'm sorry, you'd be able to tell if it was a slim, get, slim lad or a, a bulky woman. You know what I mean? But they couldn't tell. So there's still no proof of life of him at home after he left that restaurant. <coughs> so did did, did she hand him over to someone? Was this planned? Did she hand him over to someone to put him into hiding? But why? He was going to live with the dad. And it was Chris's idea for him to live with his father. So why hiding? To stop him from going to live with his father that to me that does not make sense anyway i'm sure i can't um i'm trying to stay away for yeah still gonna think on the answer grace <coughs> i'll get back up there Still nothing on the Nancy Grace yet. Yeah. 
We've still got that interview up from 13 days ago, but that isn't today's one. I know he said he was doing another interview with Nancy Grace this morning. And as I said, she normally puts a podcast out first. And then a couple of hours later, normally puts the video out. But it looks like, it doesn't even look like she's put the podcast out yet. So, like I said, I've got the GoFundMe link here. If you would like to help towards Seth, please, every little bit helps. If you like one of those sweatshirts that he has, uh, um, I'll go my page. Oh, come on. So, if you'd like one of these sweatshirts, the link the link is in my page on my Facebook page. Right? I will also put the link in the description. If you would like to hold on. Oh god, yeah, 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 this oh this close like that one. If you'd like to help go to add to the reward for Sebastian Rogers, you can do. But checks must be mailed or dropped off to reward for Sebastian Rogers. Make sure that is on the envelope. Right? James Brian Lewis, 1300 Division Street, Suite 307, Nashville, Tennessee, 37203. All donations will be held in an escrow account, which means if the reward is not used or needed, any one who's made any payment into that will be paid back. Hold on a minute, please. Hold on. Hold on, just a second. Sorry about that, that's my grandson. Still awake. Right. And you'll be awake about seven o'clock in the morning. Anyway, so that I'll put all the links in the description for you. So if you want to help with the GoFundMe link, with the reward, or in my sweatshirt or t-shirt, please. Do so. Anyway, I'd like to say thank you for everyone who's been here tonight. I'm sorry if I've been a bit hard to understand again because near the end, oh God, near, near the end, I was just starting myself getting all blocked up again. I was doing so well as well. Anyway, I'm going to call it a night.
and I'll see you all tomorrow. So until then, good night. Glad. 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 Glad.